give God praise for the life of our departed brother. We know he out of this world, but he is in a better place. No more pain, no more sorrow. All tears are wiped away. Let's all stand, please. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our opening him through all the changing scenes of life.
because you are merciful unto us. We are thankful for our gathering here this afternoon to bid farewell to our brother, a faithful soul. And we know this afternoon, although some of us might be feeling sad and we might be feeling sorrowful, we are glad that we need not to weep nor mourn because our brother has gone with a hope that one of these good days he will see the master face to face. So this afternoon we place all proceedings, dear God and Father, into your hand. Every word spoken, every song that you will sing, we commit everything to you today. And we give you all the honor, all the glory, and the praise. Be with those that are weeping and those that are mourning. We pray that God you will continue to comfort them. And Father, Lord, when this first service is finished, we pray that even the sermon, Lord, the service will touch someone's heart, that they will come to know you and whom to know is life eternal. Our brother Green has gone. He has done his part. He has left a legacy behind. His place will be missing. We pray that someone will take up the mantle and decide that I'm going to take over from where my father, where my uncle, where my brother, have left off. So this afternoon, Lord, take all the honor, take all the glory, and take all the praise while we content to wait on you for heaven's blessings is the prayer of our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you remain standing, we will sing the hymn, Come Ye That Love the Lord.
be followed by the scripture lesson taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 to 58. You can remain standing as it is read. This will be done for us by Nadia Wilkie. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This scripture is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through to 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here ends the reading. Amen. Thank you, Nadia. O death. Where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. We now have a tribute and song. This will be done by the church here, Chalky Mount Christian Mission. Good afternoon to the church. Good afternoon. First, I want to convey my condolences to the entire Green family, and may his soul rest in peace. The title of my song is Unfinished Task. If I carry the gospel to the lost near and far, I will stand in the hand at God's judgment bar. But I dare not relax till I've done all he has if I should leave behind an unfinished task for you have run you've run the race you have kept the faith these words I love to hear my Savior sing. And when my life on earth is past, there's just one thing, dear Lord, I ask. Don't let me leave behind an old If I have wronged you, my brother, if I have wounded a friend, Lord, give me courage, precious Lord, to make amends. And when I come to change this world,
And when I come to the crossing, I'll be leaving behind all my earthly processions, but that I wouldn't mind. It would make my heart glad when I leave all that I was born on June 25, 1936, to Rosaline Lamont Green and Joseph Green. He was the first of their three children. He attended the Chalk Him Out School, and at the age of 13, he entered the world of work at the Bazitz Plantation and then the Soil Conservation. After a few years, he traveled to the USA as a contract worker on the farms. There, he picked many fruits and reaped after his return to Barbados, he worked in the Ministry of Transport and Work and then as a gardener at the Granny Adams School until his retirement. At home, my grandfather had a green thumb and had his own garden and farm where he raised sheep, cows, pig, and even planted his own cane, which still grows today. When this project was, was ripe, he would travel all over the countryside, especially Chalkimo and Selden. I must make a special mention of his, one of his grandsons, Ramon, who loved his grandfather very much. And whenever grandfather's project was ready for sale, Ramon would go to his house, get what he wanted, and always tell grandfather, I ain't paying for these. <laughs> grandfather loved cricket. He loved this sport so much that even when he was on contract in the U.S. of A, he would have played the game. Leroy recalls that one time he was playing cricket out on the hospital field, and grandfather traveled all the way to St. Michael barefoot with mud on his feet just to watch his son playing cricket. His favorite team was the West Indies team. Grandfather was a member of the Chalky Mount Christian Mission Church and he participated in all activities of the church. He was saying many songs and loved Bible study. At home, he would engage in Bible study with his son, Leroy. According to church members, grandfather could pray, and his prayers were extremely powerful. He also played the harmonica skillfully, and according to Pastor Wiggins, our beloved brother Green was a cheerful giver and a humble servant of God. He joined the church over two decades ago, and he remained faithful and dedicated in his attendance and ministry until he was rendered shut in due to hospitalization and the amputation of his legs. He left a testimony, and we have the assurance that he is absent from the body, but present with the Lord. Grandfather will always invite all his grandchildren to church, and if he did not see you, 
expect a phone call to find out why. Grandfather has six children, Leroy, Winston, Dalton, Clifton, Derek, and Wishell. He had 13 great-grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. He had one sister, Miss Eleanor McLean, and one brother, Wendell Green, who is deceased. He had two daughters-in-law, and he's the husband of Miss Winifred Thornhill Green. Grandfather loved food, and he wasn't a picky eater. He loved cuckoo, and I'm sure Sister Pollard can attest to that. Wherever, whenever he went to town, he would make sure he got six fish cakes and some sweet bread, even though he was a diabetic. I remember when he was in hospital, he was given a meal fit for a diabetic, and grandfather refused to eat the food. The nurse questioned him as to why. Grandfather looked the nurse straight in her face and told her, that food ain't got a lot of salt, and I ain't eating that. I had to go get his favorite meal, cuckoo, and chicken for him, and then he ate both meals. At home, when making food, you better not take too long, as grandfather would begin to make noise. For his last birthday, his main request was chicken, and I'm positive that he enjoyed that chicken prepared by his son, Clifton. During his latter years, he had both his feet amputated, but that did not stop him as he was still very strong and active. Sadly, on July 19, 2021, he departed this earth. To Samuel, a husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, uncle, father-in-law, cousin, friend, we will miss you. Continue to rest in peace. We indeed thank God for the life of Samuel and the legacy that he has left. And it's our prayer that his children and grandchildren will follow in his steps. We now stand and sing the hymn, There's a Land, Beautiful Land. There's a land, beautiful land, just beyond, in the regions of forest delight, where no darkness or clouds break the new sign of bliss, where the sun ever shines clear and bright. Beautiful land over the sand, beautiful of the faithful and
No more sorrow, no more pain, no more crying. All these things are passed away, and we will be forever with the Lord. We reminded that here we have no continuity, because it's appointed unto man once to die, but after death, the judgment. And now welcome to the podium, our Reverend Wiggins, who is an immediate pastor here, and he will share with us from the Word of God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all our iniquities, who healeth all our diseases, who redeemeth our lives from destruction, who crowneth us with loving kindness and tender mercy. You may be seated. We give an honor to God, our Heavenly Father, and to His Son, Christ Jesus, and to the Blessed Holy Spirit. Indeed, we prize this moment. It's a moment of celebration, celebrating the life of a dear brother, our dear brother Samuel Green, who lived a life in service for the Lord. He has been taken, but we can declare as was declared before, he is absent from the body but present with the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want, by way of encouraging your hearts this afternoon, and also by focusing on the fact that our brother, he have left a legacy, to look with me again to the passage of scripture that was read for our lesson earlier, which is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 51. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 51. And our theme for the next few moments is living for the change. Praise the Lord. Living for the change. And we can change that first word, living, and substitute it with another word, looking for the change. Praise the Lord. The word of God reads as follows. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the sin, death is swallowed up into victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The stain of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. And an exhortation, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, your labor 
shall not be in vain. Living for the change. Looking for the change. I want to hear declare at this moment that our brother Samuel Green, he lived with the understanding that there will be that change. He lived looking for that change. His life was taken and he is no longer alive, but it is left for us to continue living and looking for the change. The Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth gave the church an understanding that they must need live a life in service to Almighty God, making preparation for that time when he, they will be or we will be reunited with him because we have been encouraged from St. John chapter 14, which says, let not your heart be troubled. Any of us are troubled, worried at this time? Take comfort from this word. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go, my reason for going is to prepare a place for you. So that where I am, there you might be also. So Jesus came, he lived, he died, and then he ascended into heaven. And now he is at his Father's right hand, and he is making preparation for each and every one of us. He is our intercessor. Because when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. And we have the assurance that when we pray in the name of Jesus, whatsoever we ask, it shall be done. We have been given the permission, granted the permission, to ask and it shall be given. To seek and ye shall find. And to knock and the door shall be opened. So there are those who would live anticipating the time of being with the Lord. It could happen before our death or it can happen after our death. And this is what this word to the church at Corinth is all about. It speaks about that time when man will be transformed, when a change will take place. How would it take place? He said, first of all, it's a mystery. There are many things that we would like to put answers to, and we would like to figure that we have the solution to. But with God and his word, it's a mystery. Our knowledge is not equated to his. His knowledge is far above ours. So all we are called to do in this dispensation in which we are living is to simply trust God and his word. According to Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. We ain't get it right the first time or the second time. We may never get it right. But all God is asking of us to do is to trust him. Trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not unto our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. But the grain knew of that. That is why he lived for the change. How is this change going to take place? What is it going to be all about? We may die or we may be alive. If we are alive and the change takes place, it is explained here in this passage with which we are focusing on. How is it going to occur? In a moment. Hallelujah. In a moment. Without any time for preparation, it is going to happen. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump. And it further explains, For the trump of the Lord shall sound, and the dead shall rise incorruptible. And we shall be changed. Are you looking forward for that change? In that change, the body that we are accustomed to will no longer be in existence. Because the word says in 53, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal should put on immortality. 
the body that we shall receive will be no longer subject to death. Death carries pain. Death carries sorrow. But our bodies will no longer decay. We shall be given a new body. According to John, Revelation chapter 21. Praise the Lord. John the divine saw it in the new Jerusalem. The account in Revelation chapter 21. So when this corruptible should have put on incorruption, and this mortal should have put on mortality, then shall be brought to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Death shall be no more. And it is clearly explained in verse 55. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Right now, death has a sting that takes the life of many. And it seems to be more rampant in this dispensation in which we are living in. How, how many of you are aware that there seems to be a death in a community that you are familiar with? Or in a family? Like every week. Every week. That is, that, that is conservatively speaking. But I remember a few weeks ago, we had four. There's this one. There was one last week that I attended. There's this one now this week I'm attending. And then there's another one next week. So death. It's evident all around us. And since we realize that death is evident all around us, how should we be living? We should be living for the change. We should surrender our lives to Almighty God and allow him to work his purpose out in and through our lives. Prepare us, for in such an hour we think not, the Son of Man cometh, praise the Lord. This corruptible should put on incorruption. And this mortal should have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up into victory. Death will no longer be able to have dominion over our lives or over our bodies. Praise the Lord. It says of death, verse 56, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. The law was a substitute. For man after Adam and Eve sinned. But we are glad there were limitations with the law. But the word of God in Hebrew tells us that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, came and he died once and for all. Abolishing the principles of the law. Which would dictate that you had to go in to the high priest. Which would dictate that you had to make sure that you were a constant, con, um, a constant position where you are applying blood, the blood of bulls and the blood of doves and so on. But we are glad for Jesus Christ. Somebody say praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. He came and he died once and for all. And that knowledge, I believe, propelled our brother to live for that change. Hallelujah. And even although he was not a part of the change that is uh, identify here which is a rapture he was called home in death but he has the assurance that when the time of the rapture comes he's going to experience the transformation and all those who die before are going to experience the transformation because the word of God tells us the dead in Christ shall rise when? first the dead in Christ shall rise first and then those who are remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. We have something to rejoice about this afternoon. We have something to rejoice about that we can live for the change. We can anticipate the change. The change is going to come. And when the change comes, we will be a part of the number. Praise the Lord. But death is swallowed up into victory. Hallelujah. Then verse 57 is of note of rejoicing. A note of celebration. And what is in that note of rejoicing? And all of us can shout this afternoon. But thanks be to God. Which giveth us the victory. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our victory has been wrought. Through the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A song where it says he lives. Because he lives. We can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Hallelujah. 
and we know who holds our hand. This afternoon I declare that Jesus, the Lord and Savior Jesus, who held our brother Green's hand right to the end, who took him over Jordan into the presence of Almighty God, he is still the same as he were yesterday. He will be forevermore. All we have to do is to prepare to meet our God. Are you ready? Have you made that conscious decision? Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. I therefore leave you the challenge of the final verse. If you have made that decision, I'm encouraging you to continue. And if you have not made that decision, I'm giving you an invitation to identify with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This final verse says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor shall not be in vain. I encourage all of you who have made Jesus Christ your Savior to continue. And not only just continue, but to be steadfast, to be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know what you do here on earth, God takes note of it, praise the Lord. And because he takes note of it, your labor, my labor, our labor shall not be in vain. Brother Samuel Green, a mighty servant of God, he lived the life he has been called home. Let us so live that when the roll is called up yonder, not one of us would be missing, but we will be able to hear from the master. Well done, thou good and faithful servants. Enter thou into the joy of our Lord. God's richest blessings be upon each and every one of you. And my encouragement to you, and even to myself and to ourselves, is to continue to live for the change. Look for the change, because in such an hour we think not, the Son of Man coming. God bless you. And bless his words to our hearts. For Christ's sake. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Reverend Wiggins, for those words. Reminding us that death is sure. We cannot run from it. We cannot hide from it. Because it's an appointment once a day. But after this, the judgment. On behalf of the Christian Mission, local and international, I want to convey our condolences to the family, to my cousins, and I want to convey our sympathy. We know it will be painful, but we can find that joy in sorrow. Amen. We can find that joy in pain. Amen. We can find that beautiful tomorrow of sunshine after, rain. after rain. rain. Let us therefore live the life so that when that appointment is answered, when that appointment is called, we will be ushered into a new life. And this flesh will fade away. We can carry it as good as possible. Age will take it, sickness will take it, accidents will take it. But let us see to it that at the end of it all, we'll be able to reign with Jesus throughout the countless ages of eternity. Let us all stand, please. Father, we give you thanks for the life of our departed brother. We commend him to you, Lord. We pray that he has lived his life to please you, that you would usher him into your glory. No more death, no more pain, no more sorrow. All these things are passed away. God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. We pray, God, for comfort for the children and the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. We pray, God, that they would take an example from dad and granddad, so that at the end of their life, because it is inescapable, 
that's an appointment that none of us can defer. And so, Lord, as we come to the close of this service, examine, help us to examine our hearts and see where we stand, where eternity is concerned, because you have sent your son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Take thanks for your presence. Take thanks for your word. Take thanks for everyone who is shared in this service. And as we even go to the Garden of the Dead, we pray, God, that you will continue to remind us that here we have no continuity. Take thanks for your blessing. Take thanks for your love and your mercies. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As we exit on the closing of the song, you can leave your offerings with us, the church here for the continued upkeep and refurbishment. And we give you thanks, we give you praise for so doing. Our closing hymn, The Numberless Posts. Yeah.
Welcome, my beloved in Christ, to this churchyard of the historic St. Andrew Parish Church. We welcome those who have joined us via live stream as we commit the mortal remains of our departed brother Samuel to its final resting place. On behalf of the entire parish family of St. Andrew, I do extend the deepest sympathy and sincerest condolences to all relatives and friends, particularly the inner circle of the household of our brother. Be assured of our continued prayers and may God's grace be with you. The rite of committal will now commence. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our brother Samuel, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor that when your well-beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother Samuel and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We pray together the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss, in your eternal and everlasting glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who is the resurrection and the life. Raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in him, and at the resurrection, receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our Mediator and Redeemer. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved, the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal, grant to him, O Lord, Amen. and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Amen. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll be there for us a place. To heaven. What a day, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. To heaven, what a day, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will be old. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of To God be the glory.
My faith has found a resting place. What a friend we have in Jesus.
in the sweet by and by. Let us pray. O God, the maker and redeemer of all mankind, grant us, with your servant Samuel, and all the faithful departed, the sure benefit of your son's saving passion and glorious resurrection, that in the last day, when you gather up all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promises through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, 
be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. May he rest in peace and rise to life in glory. Amen.